Good job, everybody, my name is Oscar and welcome to the top 10 biomes that were never implemented into Subnautica. This video will cover 10 biomes or environmental features that have either been discussed, planned or had concept art created for, but never actually made it into the game. Obviously, many of these were never planned to be implemented, but rather acted as ideas and concepts that may have helped to form biomes that we already know in the game today. Most of this is concept art, but it's all brilliant and not a lot of people know about these biome ideas. Let me know in the comments below which one you would have liked to see in the game the most, and feel free to leave a like if you do go on to enjoy the video. At number 10, we have the Black Field. This one is from concept artist Pat Presley, who's actually done many biome concepts for Subnautica, some of which actually made it in, like this design for what we now know as the Grand Reef. The description is handwritten for most of Pat's art, and it's not the easiest to read, so if I make a mistake I'm sorry, please correct me in the comments below. In the art, you can see some sort of submarine that resembles the Cyclops approaching some mounds that are producing a thick black substance. Pat describes it as a terrain that spews out an intense ink-like substance to undermine visibility, making you vulnerable to collision and attack. Also, certain creatures thrive in the ink. I think this probably would have been a pretty cool feature in the game, but equally, I don't think it necessarily would have fit with other biomes. At number 9, we have the Lilypad Islands. This biome has been talked about pretty much since the beginning of the game. The developers have discussed it a lot, but never seemingly found a space or time to implement it before V1 launched. Whether this is something that's coming in the future, it's not known for sure. Some early 3D models for Lilypad Islands have been released on Sketchfab, showing at least some work has gone into the idea. From the look of the concept art and models, it looks like it would be made up of large boulders supported by the buoyancy of giant lily pads floating on the surface, with a thick branch coming down from the lily pad rooted into the boulder. Therefore, it's possible that it was decided that this biome wasn't needed since the concept is pretty similar to that of the underwater islands. Either way, it would have been a pretty cool addition to the game, especially if we were given the ability to build bases on top of the lily pads. Next, at number 8, is the Magma Forest. This is another design by Pat Presley. It looks like it would have been some sort of corridor or biome surrounded by tall columns of magma, which look to be spewing lava of some kind. It interestingly also has some sort of fauna in the foreground looking at the Cyclops. It seems like some sort of very thin, four-legged creature with a webbed tail. It also has two things protruding from its head, it could be hearing organs of some kind, or just bone. It's a certainly interesting looking thing, but nonetheless it's cool to see some fauna that never made it into the game, as it was simply early concept art. At number 7 we've got the Cyanian Rocks. Pat describes this as a feature, like in the myth, the two continental rocks collide when your ship tries to pass. In order to get through safely, you have to fool it. This is a bit of a weird one as it goes along with the Greek myth of the Symplegades, also known as the Cyanian Rocks. According to the myth, two rocks called the Symplegades crashed together whenever a ship went between them. It was decided that if a bird could fly between the rocks first, causing them to crash together, Jason and the Argonaut's ship, the Argo, could pass through safely before they were ready to snap shut again. I can understand why this feature wasn't implemented, as the idea of rocks smashing together when anything went between them seems a little bit far-fetched, even on an alien planet. It probably would have ruined immersion. Next, at number 6, we have another concept by Pat. This one is called the Pillars of Silence, which is a brilliant name. He describes it as a massive field of sinkholes that send off a pillar of acid. Animals that get caught melt to bones in minutes. The bones are suspended there for ages. But if you can find a way to withstand the acid, what special treasures or creatures await in the sinkholes? This is a really cool concept, and I bet it would have looked incredible in the game, but I can understand that this concept is very similar to the Lost River with the idea of acids and lots of creature corpses. Perhaps we would have been able to make a suit that would allow us in the sinkholes? Either way, this is a really cool thing, but I can understand why it wasn't implemented. Coming in at number 5, we have the Infinite Tree. Another one by Pat, but slightly different to most of the others because it's not just a sketch. This concept looks really good, and definitely would fit with the theme of Subnautica in my opinion. It looks like some sort of tree rooted in coral that spirals upwards towards the ocean's surface. There's also more of them in the background. This art includes a few different types of fauna as well that never made it into the game. The front two looking a bit like a hoop fish, and a big pink fish in the centre that's swimming away from the player. While the Infinite Tree never made it in, the Gru clusters did, and they can be seen in various places around the game today. Next, at number 4, we've got the Super Jet Streams. This one is less of a biome feature and more of a hazard that could be placed anywhere in the game in open waters. It shows the Cyclops submarine going along some very fast moving currents. Pat describes it as a network of super fast currents that can send you or your sub to unknown places or directly damage you from debris. This probably would have been a pretty cool feature, but there are already quite a few threats to Cyclops and to you as a player, so I can see that this was definitely not needed. At number 3 we've got the Sea of Pillars, another pillar design from Pat, who clearly is a fan of tall ocean structures. It shows the Cyclops, or some similar submersible, going through a region surrounded in pillars with some sort of objects firing up from the ground. 
Pat describes it as a series of rock pillars that propel by volcanic pressure or whatever. I'm guessing whatever's being propelled upwards are rocks or something like that. This definitely would have been a huge hazard, especially for the Cyclops, so I'm glad this wasn't implemented. At number two, we have the Twisty Bridges biome. This is another biome that's been spoken about a lot by the community and the developers. It's a biome that would have been dominated by huge twisting structures covered in blue barnacles, which are actually in the game. The art also features some common faces like the gel sack, mohawk, and the hoverfish. There's also a quite large pink thing that looks quite cute until you realise it's got a massive spike or scythe on the end of its tail, like a scorpion. A few years ago, Corey Strader said that the twisty bridges, if ever implemented, are going to be in an entrance tunnel that leads from the deep ground reef to the lava zone. This was a few years ago now though, so plans have likely changed. Some early development was actually done on twisty bridges, but they were never implemented and currently stand as a biome that may be implemented in the future. There also used to be an egg in the entity gallery named the Twisty Bridges Egg, going at some point they definitely planned for it to be in the game. Finally at number one, we have the one that I personally find the most interesting. It's called the Single Cell Landscape. Pat described it as, in the deep is a seascape covered with a single life form that reacts violently to light sources. Turn on the light at your own risk. This is the kind of thing that many people felt was missing from the game, a massive organism that takes up the entire floor of a biome and can destroy the player in one attack. It's the kind of thing that a lot of people would have liked to see at the bottom of the void, as going down there and seeing a massive tentacle coming towards you in the dark would have been absolutely terrifying. Obviously it's understandable why this was never implemented, but it's definitely something I would have loved to see in the game or at least some more detailed concept art. So there you go guys, there's the top 10 biomes that were never implemented in Subnautica. Let me know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to tell me which one you like the most and which one you like the least. If you did enjoy the video, please give a like if you're feeling really, really generous. Subscribe to the current Crunchy Dave and until next one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Try my friends.